Call the meeting to order. First item on the agenda is a resolution moved by Councilor Holman, second by Councilor Mitchell. That the minutes of the regular council meeting held on July 13, 2020, be adopted as circulated. You have that set of minutes in front of you. Are there any errors or omissions with respect to that set of minutes? Seeing now, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Carry, Stephen. Next on the agenda is delegation. So we have two delegations tonight. The first delegation is Mr. Martin Smith from Access Communications, and he's joining us by Zoom. So, Martin, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Your Worship. Okay, so we'll give you the floor. I'm just going to remind you that we have a 10 minute uh, limit with respect to your presentation, but then there will be an opportunity for questions from council. So the floor is your, well, you, the, the, the podium is yours. Thank you, thank you very much and good evening, everyone. Um, I just wanted to take a few minutes just to update you on, on where Access Communications is at in terms of, uh, of your community. Um, you may or may not know um, there our Access office is closing as of Friday, um, the 14th of August. We actually have a partnership now with, uh, with Dean over at, uh, at Darn Computers, and uh, he's our new retail partner. So... We decided that we were going to uh, team up with a local business and help drive some, some customers uh, to him as well as uh, benefit us uh, as well. So as of Monday the 17th, Darn Computers will be the, the only uh, place in town to, to go to for, for access communications. Um, the other reason I wanted to meet with you as well was uh, just to provide some, some exciting news that we have for your community. Uh, before that, I just wanted to... Uh, give you a few uh, highlights of some of the things that we do uh, as, a, as a company. Uh, we provide nearly 100 access, seven community channels across the province. Uh, it's a unique platform for local expression, such as this, airing council meetings, Christmas concerts, hockey games, everything else. Uh, we support over 1,500 community organizations and initiatives, and we deliver exceptional community communications and entertainment services to over 235 communities across the province and 160,000 square miles of rural areas, uh, which include uh, rural wireless internet. Uh, one thing that uh, through the pandemic that uh, uh, it's, it's really changed the way we've, we've done business. Uh, I mean, this being one of them, um, you know, joining you by Zoom. Uh, families are at home, they're streaming from home. Uh, employees are working uh, from home remotely. Students are logging into virtual classrooms. Um, so in fact, the CRTC uh, defined internet as an essential service. So for us, we haven't slowed down at all. In fact, we've been a lot busier uh, over the last few months. Um, the good news is uh, Access Communications is investing in the network right across the province. So. Uh, I'm here to announce that uh, we're excited that we're expanding our internet service offerings in 67 communities, including in Melford. So what does that mean? Well, for the first time ever, um, our customers in Melford will be able to get 300 megabit per second uh, internet. Um, so that's 30 on the download, 20 on the upload. So I mean, the speeds are, are, uh, are just fascinating. Um, what this also means is that uh, we'll also offer, right now, uh, the customers in Melford get 25 megabits per second. That's the fastest they can get. But in the next couple of weeks, with a target date of early September, um, we'll be able to offer 50, 100, 200, and 300 megabit uh, internet. 
So on top of that, it also allows us to, to launch, um, you know, faster internet speeds and next generation products such as some cloud-based video on demand, um, some state-of-the-art PVR and, and restart television. So, um, you know, some very exciting times for us. So uh, I basically wanted to come just to, to let you know, um, you know, the, the two things. One, that we are moving. Um, we're not leaving the community. We're, we're partnering with a local business. And uh, the second thing is um, the, uh, the infrastructure and the investment in your community and into our products to provide uh, residents with uh, a lot better internet experience. So with that, I'd like to thank you for allowing me to, uh, to speak to you and then I'll answer any questions that, uh, that you may have. All right, thank you, Martin. Any questions from council? All right, we have no questions, Martin, but I just uh, did want to say that uh, uh, from my experience and what I've heard and seen, Access has been a valuable addition to our community. And so thank you very much for your presentation and bringing us up to speed with your future plans and good luck with them. Thank you very much. And thanks again for, for allowing me to speak to everyone. All right, thanks again. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to our next delegation. Mr. Jonathan Nigam with Myers Morris Penny, and he's going to, uh, his job is exciting, <coughs> the 2019 financial statements, and uh, of course we all sit on the edge of our seat for this one. So, Jonathan, it's all yours, and if you give us a presentation where we're capable of asking a question, that will be a bonus, so go ahead. Okay, we'll see how we do. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as the mayor said, my name is Jonathan Nigam. I'm a designated professional uh, providing assurance services at an NP in an Alfred office. And I'm here today to present the audited financial statements. So first off, we're going to talk about management's responsibility for the statements, and then we'll be going through the opinion that MNP is to present. Then I'm going to outline a couple key figures that I wanted it to go over with everyone and then we'll have time for a little bit of questions at the end. So first off in your package, you'll have uh, management's responsibility. So basically this is just outlining that the financial statements are in fact management's responsibility to prepare, and MNP has been engaged to audit those financial statements. Next you'll see on the actual financial statements that are going to be approved, this won't be in your package, is the independent auditor's report. So similar to last year, MNP is prepared to issue an unqualified audit opinion. So this means that in our opinion, the non-consolidated financial statements present fairly in all material respects, the non-consolidated financial position at December 31st, 2019, and the activities for the period then ending in accordance with Canadian public sector accounting standards. So with that, the audit uh, materiality for the audit was set at $250,000. And that is determined by based on professional judgment. And it's the threshold that we consider would be an impact to the users of the statement. So the first statement I wanted to bring to your attention was uh, page one. It's the non-consolidated statement of financial position. So right off the top, you'll notice that this year it says non-consolidated rather than consolidated. So when we performed our annual assessment of the Melfort Business Revitalization Corporation, MBRC, now referred to as the Melfort Trade Alliance, we determined that that alliance is no longer economically dependent of the city, nor is the city in control of the MBRC. So for this reason, we have not consolidated the activities of MBRC into the statements of the city for the 2019 year. So looking at the financial assets, a couple uh, figures I wanted to point out. The first off was taxes receivable. You can see that that has decreased from the prior year, and that's due to the acquisition of the tax title property in the year. There was substantial tax title property obtained. The next line I wanted to bring to attention was land for resale. 
So you'll see it's at just over $2.1 million. And that was an increase from last year due to the ore subdivision and also the purchase of the land in Stonegate. Looking at the financial liabilities, the first line, accounts payable and accrued liabilities, wanted to bring to your attention there that there is $175,000 accrual made for the RCMP due to retro pay. Also under financial liabilities is a capital lease obligation. So you'll see that has decreased from last year and that was due to the annual lease payments. Also last year, one of the leases was assessed as being capital. This year, we reassessed it as operating. So rather than showing as a capital asset of the city, it will now be shown as an expense as the lease payments are made. So under all of the financial statements in the 2018 column, you'll notice that it says restated note 25, and that's what that's in reference to. So looking further down, you'll see net financial assets are at $12.5 million. So this is essentially the working capital of the city that can be used to pay outstanding obligations as they come due. Under non-financial assets, wanted to bring to your attention the tangible capital assets are at about $48 million. So that has increased from last year and that was due to large projects such as the Urban Connector Program, Spruce Haven Splash Park and Playground, and also sidewalk replacements. So at the bottom of the statements, you will see an accumulated surplus of $60.8 million, which is an increase over last year. And a caveat to that is acknowledging that 48 million of that is already invested in tangible capital assets. The next statement is page two. So this is the non-consolidated statement of financial activities. A couple points to note here is under revenues, you'll see a capital heading and then government grants. So included in that $1.4 million is primarily the urban connector program. Next line is the gain on land sales. So a couple lines down, you'll see it's at just over 200,000. And we had increased that figure from what you may have seen from your internal statements, just due to the sale of land on the ore drive expansion. Under expenses, you'll notice protective services has increased from last year. And again, that's due to that $175,000 retro pay that I mentioned earlier. Also recreation and cultural services under the expenses has increased from last year. And a portion of that increase is due to cap, is due to leases, sorry, that we've assessed as being operating. And you may have seen them in your internal statements as being capital. So part of capital assets, we've changed those to operating. So looking at the bottom, you'll see excess of revenues over expenses at $3.1 million. So again, that's going to be higher than what you've seen from internal statements. And the main change is primarily due to the Urban Connector Program, where we recorded all of the revenue at gross rather than at the net cost to the city for those projects. So the next statement on page three is the non-consolidated statement of changes in net financial assets. So as I mentioned before, net financial assets are a type of working capital used to pay coming obligations. So you can see we're starting with the surplus of 3.17 million and we're doing various adjustments to arrive at that total figure as shown earlier on page one. Page four of the statements, the non-consolidated statement of changes in financial position. Essentially, this is a cash flow statement. So we're looking first at the surplus from the city in the year. We're making various non-cash adjustments. One of those adjustments you'll notice is a increase in accounts payable at 577,000. So as your accounts payable increased, your cash in turn increased as a result of not paying those obligations. Under capital activities, you'll notice acquisition of tangible capital assets at nearly $6 million. So as we mentioned previously, there were substantial capital assets added in the year, and that resulted in nearly 6 million of cash required to fund those. Under investing activities, you'll notice on the fourth line, increase in land for resale at $500,000. So again, that land for resale was purchased 
and that being the ore expansion where the costs were incurred along with the Stonegate shopping center. So at the bottom of the statement, you'll notice cash resources end of year. So at 1.3 million, it is small, or it is decreased from the prior year. But again, that was due to some of those major changes that I identified there. And this figure will tie to page one of the financial statements, the total cash amount available. With that, I won't be going through all of the notes, but I did want to bring your attention to page 15. It's the bottom note on that page, and it's note 26, subsequent event. So in this note, we're identifying that there will be uncertainties related to the 2020 year due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and those uncertainties will be addressed in our 2020 report. So with that, it's kind of a high-level overview of the financial statements. But I wanted to take time to thank the staff for their outstanding cooperation and assistance during our completion of the audit. We acknowledge that the audit is two months delayed, and that was due to the changes we had to make to our procedures for the social distancing that was required. And we want to thank the management and staff for all of their work in relation to those changes, as we do feel that the audit went fairly smoothly, considering we weren't able to be here for the full week. So again, that is the overview of the 2019 financial statements. Uh, anyone has any questions? I'd like to answer them now. All right, thank you. Any questions, Council? I'm guessing there can be a whole lot of It's riveting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it appears that there is no questions, but thank you for that uh, explanation of the financial statement. Um, None of us are accountants by trade anyway. And so uh, it is always interesting to, to follow the process. And uh, I think most of us were on the right page most of the time. So that's good. <laughs> that's the first challenge, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you very much. All right, moving on with the agenda. There is no unfinished business, business, new business and communications, nothing. General summary communication items. So, in uh, section one, there's just a news release um, from CN. Any questions or comments with respect to that news release? Okay, let's move into section two. There's three items there. Any comments with respect to any of those three items? I guess I can make a comment on item number one. Um, I request that council limit the number of cannabis licenses in offer to one. Um, I'll give you my opinion and then I can hear what the rest of council thinks. I think uh, probably what would be a good idea is to throw this to administration, do some background work with respect to what other communities are doing, and then gather that information and bring it to committee for further discussion and then possibly uh, bring those results back to council unless council feels different. So, any uh, comments from Council? Council Holmes? I, I agree with the, what the committee came up with, uh, with you know, being hesitant to limit to one license just because that is a district trade and region um, and the center. But um, perhaps, I guess, if we do go to more licenses in the city. Uh, some feedback I got from, from citizens is that maybe then we should look at the increasing the, the licensing uh, so just to make up for all the possible detriments that the, the, the individual in the, in the letter brought up. So um, I'm happy with one license being being issued in this case, and, and I'm very hesitant to just limit it to one um, just in the interest of If in the future we do a work on other license, maybe we'll be able to issue a license as well. Um, 
my understanding, uh, talking to Brent just before the meeting, uh, Director Lutz, is that we would have the option of we don't award a license. Is that right, Director Lutz? Or can you explain the process? Well, well presently, you know, we have certain authorities that we can exercise uh, when it comes to regulating businesses, locations, numbers, sizes. In the case of cannabis retail, they are permitted use in all commercial zones present. And so we've chosen not to regulate them apart from the fact that they have to be a certain distance from some of the facilities that we've included in there. That being said, we have the authority to consider doing that and establish bylaws that would enforce certain restrictions, regulations, or licensing fees, which is an interesting idea to explore, uh, whereby um, it would provide a certain degree of um, uh, comfort for existing businesses to know that other businesses, if they're choosing to, to compete, that they're planning to invest sufficiently and, and you know, <coughs> provide a good service and not just um, spread the business out so thin that none of us. We have, we have mechanisms we can use. We've chosen at this point, we've chosen not to, but I would say at the time we established um, that particular direction, that there was considerable uh, restrictions on licensing that was imposed by the province, and that they have taken a different position on this since. And so it might be worthy of us to look at it locally to see if that changes anything for us. So we can certainly provide examples what's happening elsewhere as well. Okay, so what is council's wish? Uh, do we want to uh, hand off the administration to this part of the paper, and then probably bring it to committee first, and then bring it to council? Is that sound okay? Consensus with council then? Yeah. Okay, so that's what we'll do. We'll hand that off to you, Director Lutz, to the council work. Council Benson. Is there any other business that they're limited, like uh, licensed restaurants, bars? Is there any regulations that limit any businesses? Well, I would say that there was a time when we had restrictions on taxis, for example, so it's not that it's unheard of. Um, presently, I don't know that we we have a uh, bylaw restricting the number of different type of business, but it's not that we haven't done it before. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we'll read out with administration to get more information and then we'll take the community service meeting and uh, go from there. All right, any uh, comments with respect to any of those other ones? Number two, uh, Mayor Copeland from the city of Coal Lake is requesting his full support to lobby the federal government to revoke their gun ban. Do we want to get involved in that? Should I send a letter? Of support, what's council's wish? Somebody. <laughs> we can just not send a letter or we can send a letter. What does council want to do with that? They said this just for curiosity, just so you know. They did send this to, I believe, all cities. So every city got this request automatically. It's not that they're singling out the city of Montford. I'm going to guess all Saskatchewan cities got the same request. And I don't know what any other city would have. Could we have some dialogue with other cities? So, okay, that's um, city manager. I'll vote. We'll talk to you about this. Can we get some information with respect to what other Saskatchewan cities are doing? Find out if there's some support there or not. I mean, we're we're not. I don't think if no other cities in Saskatchewan feel like that, they're willing to offer that support. I don't think we want to be in the sort of thumbs taking out. So let's uh, get some information whether or not the administration is going to do that. And find out what some other cities are doing, and then we'll, we'll move from there. And we can always send a letter at the next council meeting. It's not like it's urgent. Yeah. So, 
So we'll leave that in administration hands. And what about item number three? Uh, we're talking about all these. What about item number three, which is a request for sponsorship for a podcast episode about the city of Alfred? Um, I just have a question. City Crook, have we ever done anything like this? Or City Crooker, have we ever done anything like this before? I would suggest referring to the Community Services Department as we have a budget for various media and that. Okay, good idea. Is that, is that agreeable to Council? All right. All right, let's do that. We'll send it to uh, community services for their next meeting. All right. Did I just ask a question? Yes, Councilor Holman. In regards to that, it says he's got a range of what, 80,000 people ish amongst these podcasts. The traditional done, what would we spend to get that kind of reach, I guess, in that side of the budget? Well, so the, the challenge with reach is whether you're talking radio or print or these things online is what would you actually count online count eyeballs, uh, radio counts listeners, whether or not they're actually listening to you. Okay, typically, well, the $250 to get us an ad related problem in the Well, you don't get a lot of $250. So the ask isn't huge. So, I mean, we've done more research as to whether it is a business or 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 Comparisons or any get any gather any information at this point that you know, let's leave it at that for now. Um, so we move on with the agenda. We're moving into three minutes of reports, and we have a resolution moved by Council Phillips, seconded by Council George. Minutes of the committee of the whole meeting held on July 13, 2020. Be adopted, uh, circulated. And as this was a closed meeting, I'm just going to call for a vote on the acceptance of the resolution. All in favor? Carrie, thank you. Moving into the Legislative and Finance Committee. <coughs> I have a resolution moved by Councilor Holman, seconded by Councilor Mitchell, that the City of Melford financial statements, which include the health and municipal public accounts for the year ending December 31st, 2019, be approved. Those are the financial statements that were just presented to us. And questions or comments? It wasn't no questions or comments, but are there any questions or comments? Now, Gail, call for the vote. All in favor? Terry. Next up, we have the tax comparative tax collection comparative statement. Any questions or comments with respect to that statement? Percentage levy collected is down quite a bit. Uh, I'm assuming that's just strictly more or less related to pretty long COVID. Um, I would say it's, uh, it would be definitely I guess uh, compared, uh, comparing July 2022. July 2019, the collection for the single month is up substantially. Um, yeah, well, that would be uh, probably because uh, June 30th 
was the dead, deadline for in 2019. Uh, it, it would be after that, or it would be after that. Uh, sorry, 10 years. Usually our big one in the normal year would be May and June. Okay, cool. It's kind of spread out. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, any other questions? Okay, let's move on. To the legislative and finance department reports, the manager. Okay, uh, city treasurer's report has circulated. Questions will first occur at the time. Any questions from council? Councilor Holmes. I think I asked you this last meeting as well, but you don't expect these three appeals to really shape the bedrock of our financial coming forward here with this appeal. Um, the one thing with, with the appeals in 2020 is that uh, there's a new valuation for 2021. Um, so we'll have kind of lasting impacts. One thing that I will say that it, there are uh, bigger, two uh, bigger commercial. So okay. I, I don't okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, let's move into community and protective services committee. Pardon? Community and protective services committee is the uh, department. But we're going to now look at the minutes of the protective services commission. Okay, so I have a resolution moved by Councilor Terry, seconded by Councilor Demp, that the minutes of the protective services commission meeting held July 14, 2020, be received. So you have those minutes in front of you. Any questions with respect to that seven minutes? All right, I'm going to call for the vote. All in favor? Next, I have a resolution moved by Councillor George, seconded by Councillor Phillips. At the minutes of the Community Services Committee meeting held July 30th, 2020, be adopted as circulated. Councillor George, Councillor Phillips, you were asked, you said that's not a problem, but Councillor George, any comments with respect to that set of minutes? How do you look at this? I don't think there's anything that's you know, we've discussed the cannabis retail outlet request. Okay, any questions? Okay, call for the vote. All in favor? Carry, thank you. I have a resolution moved by Councilor Kerry, seconded by Councilor Benson. <coughs> the minutes of the Protective Services Committee meeting held on August 6, 2020, be adopted as circulated. Councilor Kerry, any comments? <clears throat> Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Uh, Chief Stewart's been burning the midnight oil on that by this material here before tonight, and there's more to come. But uh, one uh, particular item is the uh, pay scale restructuring. Um, in the past, uh, our fire department, our volunteer fire department, 
uh, base government was based on seniority and only seniority and the years that they served. Uh, Chief Stewart has come up with a program of uh, extensive training for all of our members, and the salary will now be tied to the training, which uh, I think makes perfect sense. Um, it's uh, being accepted by the members of the department, and uh, there's a resolution coming up before council this evening that uh, will put that in place. The uh, other thing to uh, highlight there is the uh, training qualifications master plan. Um, it's basically a roadmap for where the department is going, what kind of training they will receive, and when. And uh, it will be uh, extensively uh, monitored and documented through all the firefighters and the training. And uh, the other item that uh, Chief Stewart has been working on hard is the probationary uh, recruitment uh, for firefighters. And uh, I think the recruitment process is, is in place right now, but you can speak to our agreement. But uh, there is an extensive manual that comes with the recruit uh, training that they have to go through. Uh, you know, most of it is uh, to go online or home study, but there is a pretty expectation on the firefighters to take the specific training for the tasks that they're asked to do. Uh, right now, we have firefighters that are trained in different areas as opposed to others. So their expertise is used in different situations. Chief is monitoring that all the time. Uh, so, to be fair, I'll give the chief a chance to speak to this if he wishes. Chief? Sure. Uh, you know, when I talk a lot with the firefighters and my officers since I brought here, and with it being a, like after one year, the guys would jump up to a huge pay increase for where they came in, the probation, but there is some of them would stand at the back for your training, and then all of a sudden they come up to this. They're still, they might as well still be in their probationary period. But there's some of them, I'm not going to say they're, they're not as skilled, and their skill sets aren't as good as the, you know, the guys that have been out a little bit longer. Putting this in place, it's incentive driven, and it will get the firefighters more engaged, and it will give them something to work towards. And the officers that I were trying to figure out as they, progress from one level to the next, some way of recognition for that as well, whether it's like some of those like or by whether they're turning up their name or something like that, but some level of recognition that will be able to get as well. All right, and they're all type A personality, so <laughs> just one of those. Well, that's not necessarily a bad thing. No. no. So thank you for that explanation. Any questions? Councilor uh, Mitchell. It's a question with regards to the restructuring and pay. Um, I know Councilor Terry mentioned that this has been guided through the fire department and they're in favor of it. Are you red circling at the current rate or are you placing them on this current structure? So the ones that are already grandfathered into that rate will be in that rate. But the ones that are coming out of the probationary period will be in this new structure and then the ones who are in the process of all of this. Thank you. Councilor Holmes, do you have a um, That kind of, I guess, partially answers my question. But uh, I guess I was just going to ask some of the people that were standing in the back room with this new base to put on them, which I like. I think it's a great question. I don't see it. Just kind of wonder if that was going to cause some of them to perhaps step away from the fire department and that would cause short term staffing issues for you. There's the way I've broken it down there's a your probation firefighter, but when they're through that, they're, they're an exterior firefighter, an interior firefighter, broken down to here, and full service firefighter. And you know what? It takes some people in every single category to make the fire scene function. So you take a car and put that at the night time. Yes, we need to go there from the jobs. But I also need that guy there with a flash fader, you know, work light for people to be able to see. So it's that's an exterior firefighter working along the side the interior firefighter just to the skill set. So it, I, there's guys that are totally comfortable being a guy that's far away from the accident scene and not being right in there. 
by Councilor Terry, taken by Councilor Benson. City of Malvern adopt all the following restructured pay scale to the Malvern Fire Department effective September 1st, 2020. Position Fire Chief, and that hourly rate is not applicable because of salary position. Deputy Fire Chief, 3602. Captain, 3412. Team leader, exterior, interior, 33, 12. Full service operations, firefighter, 31, 22. Interior operations, firefighter, level 2, 30, 33. Exterior operations, firefighter, level 2, 26, 50. 6 to 12 month, probationary firefighter, 22, 50. And 3 to 6 month, probationary firefighter, 1950. Now these are per hour wages. Any questions or comments with respect to that resolution and the pay scale? Answer it. Just a quick question. I'm, I'm sure we, like, so when you say three to six months probation, it's the first three months don't get paid anything? No, they're, they're all here. Yeah. Okay. That's what I assume that I want to Thank you. Any other questions? Calls for the vote. All in favor? Very okay, so we through those resolutions and uh, Councilor Perry kind of alluded to this, but she screwed very good work with respect to those resolutions and the work you put in there. It's appreciated. Okay, moving on in the agenda to the municipal placing report. You have that in front of you. Any questions or comments? Okay, let's move on to the protective services department report. And city manager. Thanks, Your Worship. Uh, you'll see Chief Stewart's report as circulated here. Any questions for the whole meeting this time? Okay, any questions for the fire chief with respect to that report? It's important to know here with our heightened awareness of the COVID pandemic, we've got uh, two meetings set up and we're all prepared for a new thing that we need to operate in that matter. So. Yeah, that's good plan. Okay, let's move to the Community Services Department report. City Manager. Thanks, Your Worship. Uh, I see Director Lisa's report has circulated. Question. This time. Any questions from council with respect to any of those items? Council Mitchell. Just a quick question on the school. Um, that's the only properly already. Yeah. Councilor Holman. I just wondered if you know the completion date for that. Uh, as you know, Plans are to be operational for uh, the uh, winter season, uh, probably in advance of December. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, let's move on to the 
Actually, it's an interesting good question. Uh, cool. where, what's, where are we at? Um, as of right now, we're waiting for another rehab of the reopen Saskatchewan. We won't open that place unless the number increases a third. Um, continue, you know, we're, we're, on, we're on a weekly call every Tuesday right now, so we're close to monitoring. No target made in my grade, but. Any other questions? It's probably worth noting, you know, we've indicated that the rehab of my palace will be available for uh, rentals, but the room will not be open to the general public because they're required to maintain the same restrictions uh, as far as gathering size, etc. So, though we've indicated that that's just a reason for the office, it will be open for private rentals. It's not open to the general public, nor will the concession be open. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, and, and I guess the information you've been provided as of late today to is the SJHL is attend the date of October 9th right now. Uh, that still can change. So uh, we are going to be out, uh, out to our public here very, very soon with a, a sort of a poster flyer type to try to get some nice footage in there. But we do have the first two and a half weeks. Um, but Sufficient rental business in the Northwest Palace would be decided. That's where we'll continue to uh, to have that. I think it's important that all councils where each one of those groups has to present an operational plan to us so that we approve so that you know, all the guidelines will be met in Okay, thank you. Councillor Holman. Uh, they would have to come to us with an operational plan. Okay, anything else before we move on? Okay, let's move into the works and activities committee. I have a resolution moved by Councillor Terry, second by Councillor Benson. That the minutes of the works and activities committee meeting held July 31st, 2020 be adopted and circulated. And you have a set of those minutes in front of you. Councillor Terry, any comments? Uh, yes, your worship. Thank you. Uh, it was a quick committee, two quick items that had come up. We did uh, have the savings in the uh, in tendering from uh, Bradbury Avenue uh, meeting. And so we uh, wanted to uh, to take that and apply that to a portion, just a portion of McDonald Avenue West. Um, you may recall there's been a cross coil there near that culvert for some time and it's been patched. And it really needs to be back out and be done properly. So with this uh, extra leftover money, we can do that. But we have a resolution coming for the council to change the, uh, the meeting project plan in order to have uh, that. Uh, the other item there, uh, all the council received the copy of the engineering project update uh, back in July. And uh, we appreciate those updates. They keep us in the Okay, thank you. And towards the end, uh, yes, uh, Respect to um, the uh, first item there that Councillor Terry talked about, that uh, in reality is the money that saved the tender process had to be created for uh, part of the lead process that had already been approved. So that's why uh, that was reallocated for that project. So let's call for, oh, I should ask, any questions? Councilor Terry. All right, call for the vote. In favor? Terry, thank you. So, next up, I have a resolution moved by Councilor Terry, second by Councilor Benson, that whereas the government of Saskatchewan Ministry of Government Relations approved the City of Malford's project plan for allocation of the 2020 Municipal Economic Enhancement Program LEAP funding in the funding agreement dated June 24th, 2020, whereas the tender for the Broadway Avenue North National Overlay 
has come in under budget by $148,081. $151,081 contract amount less than quality for contract change number one. Be it re be resolved that we approve an increase in the contract scope of work to include approximately 330 linear meters of asphalt overlay on the South Avenue West, east of Broadway Avenue North. And further, that the city will now recommend the meet Schedule B project plan and submit it to the ministry for approval. Any questions? Councilor Terry, I think, just explain all that, but if there are any other questions, they'll call for vote. All in favor? Terry, thank you. Next up on the agenda is the Works and Utilities Department report. City Manager. Thanks, Your Worship. Uh, so, Director Gilmore is not here this evening. The report is in front of you as circulated. Um, I can report to you that uh, for our projects on the going now, the Hellport is, is well underway. Uh, some work being done there today. Uh, we did kick off the airport project today as well. Um, as far as our patching and stuff goes, we've uh, the paramount paving uh, arriving to town late this week. I know we started cutouts in several areas for that, as well as uh, the hot patching machine going. And our focus uh, this week and next week now, we've got uh, some operators back, but we've got to add to a few staffing uh, shortages. We're about to be in public work site, so. Or now going on to uh, replacing some fire hydrants as well as some fixing valves. Hey, thank you. Any questions, Council? Council Terry? <clears throat> yeah, but I had a few conversations with the director on this that uh, you know it would be taking advantage of the uh, Paramount paving being found with a uh, lot of to use their batching machine. At the same time that they're working in town, as the director, as the manager pointed out, however, we do have a manpower issue with some people get to get the time. But um, <clears throat> I emphasize to the director that it could be better time to have what asphalt in their own backyard as opposed to have to haul as we do in this work. So hopefully, we can find a way to get that machine run and uh, catch up from the uh, bottles. That would be great. Any other questions or comments? Councilor Mitchell. This is a good question. Operating resources to attend the report. Do we have any timelines when we start a number? Uh, we had a, a brief call on that today and expect to pay for it tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Okay, anything else? All right, let's move into bylaws. By the resolution moved by Councillor Mitchell, seconded by Councillor Holman, that bylaw 2020 11 being a bylaw to provide for the use of a vote counting system, mail in ballot voting system, and other matters associated with conducting, with conducting the municipal election be introduced and read the first time. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. A resolution moved by Councilor Mitchell, seconded by Councilor Holman, so that bylaw 2020 11 be read a second time. Questions or comments from Council? Councilor Holman. Uh, should you be on page 20? I'm just wondering if we should uh, look at the part B there as a resident of the city of Saskatoon. Change that to the city of Alfred. I think so. Ooh, shit. <laughs> Councilor Jerry, could you have something? Yeah, just clarification. 
Have we had this similar bylaw before? And is this uh, just different from the previous one or what? This is the legislation has changed to allow council to adopt the general election bylaw that consolidated all election bylaws in one. Uh, last election we had a separate mail from ballot bylaw and a Oh, one that set up the polls for an election. And then this year is our first year of using the electronic voting equipment. So that also requires a bylaw increase. So we rolled it all into one bylaw. And then it's a little easier to, to uh, be able to find everything in one place. All right, anything else? Okay, uh, Councillor Phillips. Sorry, electronic. Um, that's for council ballots. Right. Okay. Great. It'll be fed into each ballot. That's why they'll have to be colored in on the ballots as opposed to marked. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? And I might just comment that um, nomination packages are now available on the uh, website. However, um, the first day that they can be submitted is November, or September 15th, which is the beginning of the nomination period. But all the packages are there, as well as the uh, candidates can handle it as well. All right, good, thank you. Anything else? Okay, we'll call for the vote, all in favor. Okay. A resolution moved by Councillor Phillips, seconded by Councillor George, that bylaw 2020 11 be given its three readings at this meeting. All in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. And a resolution moved by Councillor George, seconded by Councillor Phillips, that bylaw 2020 11 be given a third time in the past. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. I have a resolution moved by Councillor Phillips, seconded by Councillor George, that bylaw two thousand twenty dash twelve. Being a bylaw to amend bylaw 2019-21, known as the signed bylaw, be introduced and read a first time. All in favor? Gary? A resolution moved by Councillor Terry, seconded by Councillor Benson, that bylaw 2020-12 be read a second time. Questions or comments from council? Seeing none, I'll call for the I mean, oh, Councilor Mitchell. Just, when I read this uh, notification, it said the second third reading would be at the September council meeting. Uh, does this require a public notification? Because the briefing knows that it does, so I'm just wondering. That was incorrect, it's stated in the briefing notes. We do have resolutions with all in regards to the zoning bylaw. And uh, so that was an interesting to see this particular one can do. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Councillor Phillips. Just for clarification, this is so that signs are in alignment as far as. Uh, when we drafted the new zoning bylaw, we also drafted the new sign bylaw. And uh, the language changed in that bylaw as a result of this. Uh, your building could be closer to the street than your sign could be. And the logic could you know, be in the line there. So it doesn't require you to place the sign there, but it permits you to put the sign as close as the property line and see how it's in. There's no requirement to set that. Okay. Okay. Anything else? 
Call for the vote on second reading then. All in favor? Carried. I have resolution moved by Councillor Holman, seconded by Councillor Mitchell. That bylaw 2020-12 be given three readings at this meeting. All in favor? Carried unanimously. A resolution moved by Councillor Mitchell, seconded by Councillor Holman. That bylaw 2020 12 be read a third time and passed. All in favor? Carried. A resolution moved by Councillor George, seconded by Councillor Phillips. That bylaw 2020. 13 the bylaw to amend bylaw 2019 19 known as the zoning bylaw be introduced and read the first time. All in favor? Carried. And this is the one where it's a first reading only bylaw, so that will come back next month after any public input. All right, we've hit the place where we have announcements. Anybody got any announcements? Good evening, Mayor. If I could, I would just like to write. Yes, in uh, Ninja. I think uh, condolences out to the colleagues today on the passing of the suite and the big part of our care director uh, team over there. So um, he's been with the city since 2011. Uh, that was sent here. Okay, anybody else? All right, let's move into the final resolution tonight. Moved by Councilor Terry, seconded by Councilor Benson, that this meeting be adjourned. All in favor. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You look a lot better than your empty chair, buddy.